Houston is making a dramatic comeback, and I'm happy to be back on the air with you. I'm Paula Zahn, and you can catch me every weekday morning with Harry Smith on CBS This Morning. We talk to some very interesting people, as well as keep you informed on the latest news, sports, and weather. Join us every weekday right after AM Houston for CBS This Morning. I'm back in touch with you, Houston, and it's great to feel the spirit of Texas once again. AM Houston at 6, CBS This Morning at 7 on Channel 11. The world isn't getting smaller. It's getting closer. Now more than ever, turn to the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. This is CBS. We're covering these late developments tonight. The hunt is on tonight for the owner of a West Side nuisance. Tonight, the kit in the pit. A peaceful march comes to a violent end when a big 18-wheeler smashes a patrol vehicle and kills a deputy. And the odds were great. But it was a nice try tonight. The most famous house in Liberty County is flooded out. Late news, record-breaking steamy weather, and how bad can it get for the Astros? Next on 11 News tonight. When my sister and I were little girls in Canada, we used to set each other's hair every Saturday night and talk for hours about all the things we'd see if we ever left Nova Scotia. Well, I'm married now and live with my own little girls in Cincinnati. Don't you know, I go back to Nova Scotia almost every Saturday night. Who says you can't go home again? Go ahead, reach out and touch someone. The people who buy Mrs. Bear's bread expect it to be fresh. So each morning we're in a race against time to get Mrs. Bear's bread to you just hours out of the oven. You can really tell the difference. It not only feels fresh, but it tastes fresh. That's the way my grandmother Baird made it over 75 years ago. And that's the way we make it today. So, when we say Mrs. Baird's bread is fresh, it's a matter of family pride. Stand for, thank you. I've seen a lot of burns over the years. And the first thing you want to do for a burn is to stop the pain, fast. We've been using water gel as an emergency treatment on burns for about three years now. And it's amazing. We put a water gel dressing on a burn, and it relieves the pain fast. Now you can get water gel for your home. So when someone in your family gets a painful burn, you can relieve that pain fast, the way we do, with water gel. KHOU-TV, Houston. And now, from 11 News in Houston, Steve Smith, Marlene McClinton, Dr. Neil Frank with weather, and Gip Nielsen on sports. This is KHOU 11 News at 10. A slimy pit sucks down yet another victim that must be rescued and threatens youngsters in a near downtown Houston neighborhood. And tonight, 11 News has learned that government agencies have known about it for weeks, but little has been done. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. We first told you about this story on Friday night, a vacant building where children play. Inside the building, a 15-foot deep, unprotected sludge pit. The city started investigating after our report, but says it can't take action until it finds the owner. Well, as Dave Failing reports tonight, the hazards of this building have been known to government agencies for some weeks now. Come on. This is the latest victim of an unprotected sludge pit inside this vacant building. Friday, animal rescuers had to pull a dog from the pit's oily waters. This morning, this cat. Um, I think it's a matter of getting the oil off. And she couldn't have been there hopefully longer than, than a day. We've found that this shut down metalworking plant, situated in a crowded neighborhood off Memorial Drive, has had a bizarre recent history. A few weeks ago, neighbors got worried when they saw big tank trucks pull up and start running hoses into the building. Steve Dubel lives right across the street. Yeah, we saw some trucks out here pumping something, and we were suspicious that they were dumping toxic things in, so we called pollution control. But it turned out to be a toxic cleanup company hired by a realtor to pump out and haul away the smelly, grimy liquid. A lab analyzed the liquid and found that it contained oil, but apparently nothing too terribly dangerous. But it remains a mystery why the cleanup was not completed. The pit still has several feet of liquid waste in it. There are still several full drums nearby. Today, we told the Texas Water Commission what we'd found here. An investigator said late this afternoon, his agency is now tracking down the owner, believed to be a company in Massachusetts, and will ask it to clean up the site. 
Also looking for the owner is Houston's Dangerous Buildings program. We showed one of its directors the building Friday. That is probably one of the worst hazards I've seen. The city put up this warning, but has yet to secure the building. Kids often play inside the dangerous structure, and as of tonight, they still can. Dave Failing, 11 News. We apparently are going to be asked to take the good with the bad in the next city of Houston budget. The good, no property tax increase. The bad, higher water rates again. City Hall reporter Bill Jeffries has highlights of the mayor's budget due out late this week. Mayor Kathy Whitmire's budget plan for the coming year may go to council members Friday. Among highlights, water bills that go up 5% this year and keep climbing after that. An average bill now of more than $36 climbs to nearly $50 by 1994. The money is needed for EPA-ordered pollution control projects. The mayor's budget proposal is not expected to include a property tax hike, but it will include cuts in most departments. No significant layoffs are expected, although many departments may lose workers through attrition, and a small pay raise is expected for employees, the first real pay increase since 1985's 3% hike. Finance Director Al Haynes has said employees ought to receive 8% pay hikes or more. An increase that large is not expected. Council members will get more money to run their offices, some $28,000 a year extra. It's money most council members want, but some strongly question the mayor. That appears to me to enhance her chances of getting them to vote for the budget. Uh, in other words, uh, she's buying votes. Take a lot more than twenty-eight dollars or $30,000 to buy my vote. And I think uh, all council members would feel that way. I, I think it has nothing to do with that at all. I think what it has to do with is that we're trying to do a better job of uh, helping our constituents. A garbage pickup fee may once again be proposed by the mayor. Council has previously shot that idea down, saying it's unfair to the poor. The mayor says what's unfair is that apartments and businesses do not receive city garbage pickup. Perhaps the main budget highlight, the expectation that Mayor Whitmar will not ask for a tax hike, is not set in stone. Council could overrule the mayor on that one, but typically council doesn't, figuring if the mayor wants a property tax hike, she'll have to ask for it herself. Bill Jeffries, 11 News. Depending on who you're listening to tonight, negotiations between the governor and the legislature over the school reform bill are either on again or off again. One thing for certain, though, the governor didn't veto the bill today as promised, even though he scheduled a news conference, then didn't show up. As 11 News reporter Norm Yule tells us. A veto looked imminent as Lieutenant Governor Bill Hobby and House Speaker Gib Lewis emerged from a late afternoon meeting with Governor Clements. Clements still opposed the legislature's plan to fund its school finance bill with a half-cent sales tax hike. And most legislators appeared to oppose Clements' alternative of raising license fees and the cigarette tax. Negotiations appeared to be at an impasse. Did he say he was going to veto Yeah. When did he say he did it? Very soon. Today? Possibly, I would think so. so Governor name? Clements even scheduled a news conference, but aides kept pushing the time back. Finally, about two hours later, Clements was seen heading for his car. Did you veto it, Governor? No. You didn't veto it? Y'all go home and get something. Where are you for? <laughs> no, I didn't. They pull it back. They've got the bill. No, you don't have the bill. You got the bill, Eddie? No. Representative Eddie Cavasso says Governor Clements is playing games. And I think I think he's enjoying the attention, to be honest with you. He's enjoying the silly games you all are, that he's playing. I know you can't do it, but it's the best thing would be for all you all to ignore him. But we're sitting here Nobody pay attention to him. I think a little kid will make noises. So uh, he's having a ball at the time of his life, being irresponsible and getting attention. Representatives Cavazos and Stiles accused the governor and his chief of staff, Mike Toomey, of stalling the legislature until closer to the court-ordered deadline to force more concessions. But Toomey says it was Speaker Lewis who asked the governor to hold off on his veto. Where we are is that there's, there continue to be discussions about uh, the education bill uh, between the respective offices, and, and the governor will make a decision uh, sometime tomorrow, probably in the morning, about what he's going to do about the, about the bill. I talked to the governor. But Lewis says he did not pull the bill or ask for more negotiations. He says he merely asked the governor to reconsider signing the bill. In Austin, Norm Ewell, 11 News. Now to the real world tonight, the latest on the flooding. It has become a symbol, an example of one man's firm determination to back, uh, beat back the ravages of Mother Nature. And it worked for a while. The levee Howard Pipkin bulldozed around his Liberty County house was seen on national TV in the newspapers all over. 
Well, tonight it just sits there, rising just above the muddy water like a giant waterlogged donut. The Trinity's flood water proved too much for the makeshift levee. It gave away. The water may be going down finally up at Lake Livingston, but it's too late for Howard Pipkin's house. It was a record-setting day in Liberty County as the Trinity reached its highest level since they started keeping records on such things back in 42. But all that high water is drawing some unwanted spectators and water lovers. Carolyn Campbell joins us live now from Liberty County with more on the problem. Carolyn? Well, Marlene, during daylight hours, it really is hard to keep the sightseers and water skiers. It's hard for them to resist the temptation of all this high water. But Liberty County officials took some strong measures today, and they're hoping to save some waterlogged homes. And so what they did was is trying to keep out some of those people trying to get in and get gawk at what's going on in the waterlogged areas. You can watch the sunset on the Trinity River almost anywhere along Highway 90 here in Liberty County. And that's probably the best place to be, because if you're caught trying to get a look at the water damage in subdivisions along the river, you could be slapped with a $1,000 fine. This morning I asked the commissioner's court to issue a, code, a court order uh, asking the sightseers, boaters, and the other people, unless they belong in that subdivision, to please stay out of that subdivision. Liberty County officials want to put a stop to water sporting thrill seekers and spectators. And that's really good news to folks who don't have water in their homes yet. You get a trailer like mine, it's pretty close. Right now it's not actually in the water, but you get a, a boat coming through making real big waves and it'll get the floor in that trailer. Last year when the water came up we had trouble with kids skiing up and down the road and uh, causing wakes and causing water to come in our homes when we actually didn't have water in, in the homes just from the waves of the, them playing. I don't think they realized quite the extent of what their plan was doing to the people's uh, homes and their property. As the Trinity River finds new yards and homes to invade, some folks are learning you don't have to live on the river to be consumed by it. We don't live on the river. We're getting the backwater from coming in from both sides, up through the sloughs, and uh, we just didn't think it was going to get this bad. So. Now, Steve and Marlene, the Trinity River Authority is still releasing more than 100,000 cubic feet of water per second from the Lake Livingston Dam. But if we don't get any more rain, that amount could be reduced. But there's still a lot of water that's already here that's going to go, have to go down, and that's going to take quite some time. Some of them are probably breathing a sigh of relief tonight, Carolyn, but it's still a ways to go. Thank That's you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And as if Liberty County could stand any more tragedy, now one of its deputies has been killed in a grinding road accident, killed in a peaceful march, remembering the dead and missing in Southeast Asia. Vietnam veterans were walking from Cleveland to Texas down to Houston on Highway 59. Liberty County Deputy Jesse Earl McFarland was following in his patrol car. A big 18-wheeler came up on the scene. The truck crushed the deputy's vehicle smashed into it from behind. We look back and this 18-wheeler had run over our police escort. Is sitting in the back of this pickup truck. The 18-wheeler stopped rolling on the bed of that truck. McFarland had died at a local hospital. The pickup driver and two marchers were hurt, but not seriously. Charges are being considered tonight against the truck driver. Another bad accident, this one on the Hardy Toll Road, has critically injured two people tonight. Police say a young woman was swerving, swerving in and out of traffic on the road, driving more than 90 miles an hour. She apparently hit a stalled truck on the shoulder. That vehicle smashed into another car. Two brothers in their 60s were standing near that car. Both are in Herman Hospital tonight in critical condition. Traffic was backed up for some time because of the accident. Police say they'll file charges against the woman. Three young men are facing charges. They sexually assaulted a student at a Houston school. A Harris County grand jury has indicted two 17-year-olds, Gerald Brown and Edgaro Nunez, as well as 20-year-old Cecil Lewis. They've been charged with conspiracy to commit sexual assault. It happened at the Contemporary Learning Center earlier this month. A school camera secretly captured the assault on videotape. The 16-year-old boy who allegedly attempted the assault hasn't been charged yet. There's a person named in the indictment who is supposed to be the person who actually committed the sexual assault. Um, and and he will, he's not to be named uh, in the press. His name hasn't been released because he is a juvenile. 
The three charged are being held on $2,000 bond. HISD is refusing comment while the case is under investigation. You can beat a crook with a book. It's Channel 11's new crime guide, and it's coming your way. We'll tell you how to find it coming up. Well, Neil says there is no way we can beat this heat. He'll have the forecast. And later tonight, a whale of a tale for some youngsters on a boat ride. Waving to us. There he is. Got it. If I was a guy at Jack in the Box dreaming up new sandwiches and I could do anything I wanted, I'd take juicy sliced sirloin right off the grill, smother it with grilled onions and lots of cheese and melt it all together. <laughs> Guess what? Somebody beat me to it. The new sirloin cheesesteak. Sliced sirloin smothered with grilled onions and melting cheese on a toasted steak roll at Jack in the Box. Give that man a raise. At a time when you need every little edge, your Oldsmobile dealer gives you all the edge you need. Introducing alternate transportation. When you leave your car off for warranty service, Oldsmobile doesn't leave you. Your Olds dealer will help you get where you're going and pick up the cost. Catch a taxi, hop on our shuttle, or take a loaner for as long as you need it. Alternate transportation. It's one more reason why Oldsmobile is your key to quality cars and better dealer service. The Houston Symphony Series at the new Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion in the Woodlands. Bring the family for a summer evening in the woods and under the stars. James DePriest conducts Chopin and Beethoven. Newton Whalen and Pops, a salute to Broadway. Carl St. Clair conducts Beethoven and Liszt. Giselle Bendor conducts Rachmaninoff and Rimsky Korsakov. And finally, Ray Charles and the Houston Symphony. Tickets for all five incredible performances are available now at Ticketron.